Hello, this is Dr. O'Black, Assistant Superintendent for the Shaler Area School District. On behalf of Mr. Aiken, our Superintendent of Schools, and our administrative team, we would like to thank you for joining us for this Back to School Task Force report. The Shaler Area School District's Back to School 2020-20 Task Force has been developed to discuss options to address the challenges we face upon reopening our schools. It is prudent to consider how this situation can continue to impact the 2020-21 school year. At this time, it's unclear of when and how school buildings will be fully open, but we are considering innovative and effective solutions to help provide a full and well-rounded curriculum in the environments that are safe and compliant with social distancing requirements. Our mission has and will continue to be to fully prepare for a safe return of our entire school community. Throughout the task force work, the district has and will continue to rely on the guidance and lead experts, including our local state public health officials, the Pennsylvania Department of Education, and the governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Our guiding principles for the reopening of schools include safety, flexibility, consistency, and community input. Our ultimate guiding principle is to place the safety and welfare of our staff, students, and families first and foremost. Additionally, flexibility and compassion are the hallmarks of our efforts. Our goal is to give families flexible options that are considerate and compassionate to each family's needs and circumstances. Providing consistency structure and multiple levels of support for our students, staff, and families is an important part of our reopening efforts. This includes a tiered approach to address the academic and social emotional needs of all. And finally, but most importantly, input from our families, staff, and community stakeholders is essential to our planning efforts so that we can create a model that is reflective of their needs and responsive to their concerns. During the back to school task force planning, we addressed three separate scenarios. Scenario number one is the traditional model that can only occur when Allegheny County is in the green phase. This scenario will enable students to attend school Monday through Friday. Our schools will follow traditional hours unless directed by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania or a localized emergency occurs that would prevent the normal operation of school. The hybrid model, which was tentatively announced as our plan for returning to school at the end of August, can only occur when Allegheny County is in green and must occur when Allegheny County is in yellow. This scenario will enable students to take classes both in person, at school, as well as online. We recognize that some family, may, family members may have certain health-related issues that prevent some obvious concerns. As such, we will do everything in our power to provide an option that will maximize safety protocols with a balance of personal support for all children, including those with elevated health risks. And finally, the third option is virtual learning, and this must occur when Allegheny County is in red. This scenario will enable students to learn online via our virtual learning model, either 100% or during sporadic school closures. Students will not be expected to attend school in person. All of their classes will take place remotely with constant access for, and support from district staff. The Back to School Task Force relied heavily on guidance from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, specifically their guidance in reopening schools. As you will see, there are a series of considerations that we must take in order to safely and effectively reopen our schools. We will discuss more of our mitigation strategies as released from the Pennsylvania Department of Education later in this presentation. The Pennsylvania Department of Education has released preliminary guidance to aid schools in planning for a return to in-person instruction, delivery of services, and the resumption of extracurricular activities. This guidance should and has served as the starting point for our school leaders and will continue to evolve as future research, 
data, and resources become available. The governor is expected to release further guidance for school districts soon. All decision makers in our back to school task force were very mindful that as long as there are cases of COVID-19 in the community, there are no strategies that can completely eliminate the transmission risk within a school population. The goal of our school administration and teachers is to keep transmission as low as possible so that we are safely to able to continue school activities. All of our activities must be informed by Governor Wolf's process to reopen Pennsylvania. Governor Wolf's administration has categorized reopening into three broad phases, which are outlined below, red, yellow, and green. These designations signal how counties and or regions may begin easing some restrictions on school, work, congregate settings, and social interactions. We are focusing our planning and our presentation today on the yellow and green phase. In these phases, schools may provide in-person instruction after developing a written health and safety plan, which will be approved by the Board of School Directors in the month of August. Several committees were comprised of our back to school task force. The task force was chaired by myself and Mr. Sean Aiken, our superintendent of schools. Committees focused on the back to school task force planning included health and wellness, curriculum instruction and assessment, special education and mental health services, school operations, technology, transportation, and community relations. Members of these committees included teaching staff, support staff, school administration, district administration, parents, and experts in the fields of health, facilities, and operations. Earlier this summer, the school district released a community survey. A total of 2,485 surveys were completed during the 12-day survey period. Of the families who completed the survey, approximately 14.5% of, of the respondents had children with individualized education plans. 8% of respondents had children with a gifted individual education plan, and roughly 3% of the respondents had children with 504 plans. Below, you will see a quick snapshot of the results from that survey that were taken into account by our back to school task force in their planning for the reopening of the school year. We will now begin to address the instructional scenarios that the Shaler Area School District has developed in response to the reopening of schools. The first scenario is the traditional returns to school model. In this scenario, Shaler area students will return to our school buildings for a regular school schedule if CDC and health department regulations are modified. Social distancing guidelines will be followed to the maximum extent possible. Individual school schedules may be adjusted during the school day to limit the number of students in large gathering areas such as cafeterias, gymnasiums, and hallways. Families will have the option to provide transportation for their students in order to limit the number of students on buses. All cleaning, disinfecting, and sanitizing procedures will be followed to support the health and safety of all students and staff. And finally, families who choose not to send their students back to school will have the option of participating in a full online model, which will be discussed later in this presentation. Instructional scenario number two, the hybrid school return, which is the tentative plan for returning to school at the beginning of the 2020-21 school year, will offer families the option of in-person instruction in Shaler area school buildings with social distancing protocols per the CDC and Pennsylvania Department of Health guidance. In this model, students will attend classes at their school a minimum of two days per week with additional days offered as feasible based on health and safety guidelines. Students in cohort A, this will be students with last names beginning with A through K, will report to in-person instruction on Monday and Tuesday. 
they will engage in remote learning on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Students in cohort B, these are students with the last names beginning with letters L through Z, will report for in-person instruction on Thursday and Friday and engage in remote learning on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Schools can meet the day and hour requirements using remote, hybrid, and blended learning for the 2020-21 school year as long as students are engaged in 180 days of instruction is defined on our school district calendar. This is a visual description of our model for returning to school in the three student cohort. Additionally, with the hybrid return to school model, students who attend A.W. Beatty will have the opportunity to attend this program as directed by the health and safety plan approved by the joint operating board of A.W. Beatty. Shaler area recognizes the importance of hands-on instruction and learning that is critical to the career and technical program. Additionally, students with exceptional learning needs and or ESL services will have the opportunity to physically attend school on a more frequent basis based upon their IUP team discussions. Students who choose to remain home and not physically attend school will participate in the Shaler Area Titan Cyber Academy. Through this hybrid model of instruction, class sizes will be approximately reduced in half. This will allow for the recommended social distancing guidelines to be followed in instructional and common spaces. When possible, instruction can occur outside. The final scenario, instructional scenario number three, is full virtual learning. This scenario will enable students to learn online via our virtual learning model, either 100% or during sporadic school closures. Students will not be expected to attend school in person. All of their classes will take place remotely with constant access. This scenario may also be mandated by the governor and health organizations. Our teaching staff would provide virtual and remote learning if we are unable to convene in our schools. This would be similar to how we completed the 2019-20 school year with some additional instructional features and other considerations. We are working with our staff regarding professional development to strengthen this option. Students who choose to remain home and not physically attend school will participate in the academy with district and or contracted employees through the Allegheny Intermediate Unit. It should be noted that students must remain in the online program for the first nine weeks of the school year. We would now like to discuss several of the mitigation strategies that we will be using within our school buildings in order to maintain a health and safety learning environment for our staff and students. Enhanced cleaning procedures have been implemented to ensure surfaces remain clean and disaffected. This process is to daily clean and dis disinfect with US Environmental Protection Agency registered disinfectant to prevent the spread of bacteria and viruses. Our buildings and grounds and custodial department will expand the focus on high frequency touch surfaces such as door handles and push bars, handrails, stall doors, faucets, and paper towel dispensers throughout the school day. In schools, disinfecting is the responsibility of the custodial staff, preferably when students are not present. Overuse of cleaning products does not provide any additional protection. Students will not be directed to use disinfectant wipes or chemicals in our schools. Symptom screening will be done by all parents and guardians at home each morning before the school day. No children with symptoms will be sent on a school bus or brought to school. Additional information on the symptom screening will be sent prior to the start of the school year. All district staff will perform a symptom screening on themselves prior to leaving for work and will stay home if ill. Temperature screenings will not be required upon entrance to school for students or staff. Students and staff will consistently be made aware of the signs and symptoms of COVID-19. 
Students and staff will go to the nurse immediately if feeling symptomatic. Additionally, our school leaders and teachers are looking at classroom configurations and many will be altered for maximal social distancing as feasible. For example, staggered rows of desks all facing the same direction with limitations on face-to-face -face seating. All high-touch surfaces will be disinfected regularly. And all individuals in the school will sanitize or wash their hands on a frequent basis. Hand sanitizer will be made available in all common areas, hallways, and or in classrooms where sinks for hand washing are not available. High traffic hallway use will be limited when feasible by either staggering the end of classroom periods to reduce the number of students in the hallways simultaneously and or by requiring masking. Use one-way traffic patterns in the hallways along the outside edges when possible. Cafeterias will be utilized for groupings of less than 250 students. Cafeteria procedures and seating will be established to promote social distancing. Schedules will be developed to create small groups and to minimize cross grouping. Students will be able to provide their PIN number verbally to the cashier instead of entering it on the PIN pad themselves to eliminate that high touch area. Based on building size and capacity, breakfast and lunch may be served in classrooms. Students will be permitted to remove their masks while eating. Locker room work use will be restricted. Recess will be able to occur while maintaining proper social distancing as possible. This can look different at individual buildings depending on space and number of students. Physical education classes are encouraged to be outdoors when possible. Activities in the gym will maintain social distancing when possible, requiring curricular adjustments to limit student contact and sharing of equipment. The equipment will be sanitized after each student use, and students will sanitize their hands before and after class. We are also encouraging our staff to limit shared items to, max, to the maximum extent possible. Cleaning and disinfecting shared items, including technical devices between uses, in keeping each student's belongings separated from others in an individually labeled containers, cubbies, lockers, or other areas. We will be refraining from scheduling large group activities such as field trips, intergroup events, and extracurricular activities. We will be restricting non-essential visitors, volunteers, and activities that involve outside groups. Temperature checks will occur for outside service providers like the Allegheny Intermediate Unit, Students Assistance Program, and school-based mental health staff. If an employee has been exposed to an individual who has tested positive for COVID-19, the employee is directed to stay home and monitor for symptoms until 14 days from the last exposure or until cleared by a physician. Our employees who have tested positive for COVID-19 are strongly encouraged to self-report their diagnosis to their building administrator. They may return to work once they are cleared by their doctor to return. A doctor's release is required prior to their return to work. Included below is the exclusion and return requirements for students and staff. Additionally, each building will determine an isolation space for anyone displaying symptoms of COVID-19. Student transportation has been another main focus of our back to school task force. The task force has recommended that school buses can operate with a maximum of two students per seat with the understanding that masks will be required of students while on the bus. Bus drivers will also be required to wear face shields and or masks when students enter or exit the bus. Drivers may choose to wear a mask at all times when students are present unless specifically prohibited by the bus company or school entity policy. Current social distancing guidelines pose significant challenges for busing students. If students and families can opt out of district transportation, 
it will make for less children on our school buses and give us, give us an easier avenue to safely distance the children who do ride on our buses. If your child will not need district transportation both to and from school for the 2020-21 school year, we ask that you please complete the intent form emailed to you no later than Friday, August 7th. One form must be completed for each student. While this decision is for the entire school year, we can reevaluate at the semester break if circumstances change. We will also assign seats to sit by siblings and family members together and load buses from back to front to limit students walking past other students among other health and safety precautions. We have several next steps outlined regarding our return to school planning. During the week of August 3rd, we will be hosting virtual building town hall meetings to address specific concerns related to the building in which your child or children attend. Additionally, in the email that you will receive will be the parent commitment form. This will be distributed during the week of July 27th. This will include the transportation opt out as well as your commitment to hybrid or virtual learning. This commitment form is due by Friday, August 7th. Additionally, we will be hosting informational virtual meetings regarding the full online learning model via the Titan Cyber Academy. The deadline for full enrollment in this program is August 13th. Again, as a reminder, you must remain online for the first nine weeks. And finally, our meeting of the Education Committee and Board of School Directors for the approval of the district's health and safety plan will occur on August 5th, 2020 it's 6 o'clock p.m. This meeting will be held virtually. As we complete today's presentation, just a few final, final thoughts. The health and safety of our students and staff remain our first priority. The district will continue to keep this at the forefront of all decisions that we make regarding the reopening of schools. While we do not have all of the details finalized for each of the instructional models, please know that the district is working collaboratively with the teachers association, teacher leaders, school principals, and others in developing plans that meet our needs as a district. And finally, as a district, we will get through this unfortunate time together. As we have said, and we will continue to say, we are stronger together. We are fortunate to have a committed staff who cares deeply about our school and our community. If you have questions or concerns regarding any of the content shared in the program or information relative to the return to school, questions can be submitted via the link sent to your district email account. Answers will be included in an FAQ guide to be published to the district website. We thank you for your time today and we look forward to welcoming your children back to school in the month of August. Thank you.